So this farm's located on the Southland coast um, near Curio Bay. It's probably one of the furthest south dairy farms in the country. It's quite a unique area, so it has hectares, dolphins, yellow-eyed penguins and um, seals on the beach. It's a special place to live and we're quite privileged, we think, to bring our children up in this kind of area. Uh, we came here in 2009 as part of a partnership to convert this farm. It used to be a sheep and beef farm. We're in our fourth season now, so it's, everything's going pretty well really. We're quite pleased with how the farm is turning out as well as the production that we're getting. Well, when we converted the farm we all had the same sort of plans for it. We wanted to make it sustainable, we didn't want to have any sort of negative impacts. For me sustainability is looking after the people that we have working on the farm, the animals that we have here um, and this piece of land but it also has to sit alongside making a profit so we need to be in the black to be able to do those things. I suppose the big picture around sustainability is for our farmers it's protecting their ability to farm and their ability to farm profitably and to be able to grow. When we arrived there was no stock water system um, and that's not ideal in terms of improving water quality. So the first thing that we did was put a stock water system in that accesses all paddocks. So our water now comes from underground and it's pumped to concrete troughs all over the farm. The animals can just walk up to a trough and get a drink and it also helps our management a lot because we can also add things to our water, so we can add minerals that just generally help our management as well as the cow health. Once we'd done that, we started to fence. So Chris on this farm has done about 10 kilometres of fencing. When we came to doing that, we involved the stakeholders in this property. So um, because of the unique features that are here, we've had interest from land care, dock, environment, Southland, fishing game, um, and the QE2 Trust and they worked together to help us place those fences so that we had buffers along the waterways that did what we wanted them to do. We just sort of followed the natural contour there so it's not really land lost because I mean cows are not going to clamber down those banks and eat it all that well anyway. Yeah no we're really pleased with how it's come away. It's obviously providing a good filter for anything that runs off the paddocks so it works well. Yep. So in terms of planting, we had a lot of help from Doc and Landcare in terms of what plants would actually grow here. So it's a coastal, um, quite climatically challenged environment with lots of salt spray and wind. So they helped us to choose plant species that would survive here and also increase biodiversity. We've planted over 10,000 plants to provide shelter for stock but also to re-establish the forest areas um, and the wetlands along the reservoir here. Obviously our cows are milked twice a day and they produce quite a bit of effluent and wastewater in the shed that needs to go somewhere. So we put in quite a well specced effluent system which allows us to store for about 120 days. So what that means is we can store effluent um, until conditions are absolutely right to put it onto pasture and have the nutrients be taken up by the plants. We also have on the farm some soil tapes which give us an indicator of moisture levels of the ground so that we're um, applying only in the optimum conditions here because we don't want to lose any of it like by running away because it's obviously a good fertiliser for us and we just want to put it back into the ground and use it. There are some misconceptions out there, those that look at it and think that we're actually at risk of losing something or we're going to be restricted in some way. So to be able to show that there is actually advantages in management, that they are producing up and above uh, area average and in fact leading the way. For me, it's really important that we're not having a negative impact on the environment. So when we came here, we started doing a series of water tests. So before we converted um, ongoing till now, and we've been able to see a really big improvement in water quality, particularly for E. coli. It's been proven all over the place that if you fence off your waterways that that makes a massive difference. It just brings that level right down all over the place. But no, it is a nice feeling, it's good, yeah. That just gives me peace of mind that going forward my kids are still going to be able to swim in the sea and, and do the things that I want them to be able to do. Looking at the, the future on this farm for, for Chris and Lindsay uh, is very bright and that they've adopted a very you know, sustainable approach. Very simply, they're doing what's right. We're really excited to see the plants that we've 
spent all this time planting, growing. And as they do that, we're seeing um, lots more bird life and just the look of the place, it's really great to be outside and enjoy it. Being sustainable is important to me because I want to leave this piece of land in a better condition than we found it so that going forward my children and their children's children can enjoy this really special place.